Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 6, Genetic Change. This is video number 18, and we're going to be having a little bit of a look at gene cloning. The learning intention for this video is that you investigate and assess the effectiveness of cloning, and this time focusing on gene cloning. So we need to contrast gene cloning and whole organism cloning. We need to be able to describe an example of the application of gene cloning and maybe assess its effectiveness as a type of reproductive technology. In the last video, we had a look at whole organism cloning, and this is where we create copies of the entire genome uh, of a particular individual and try and reproduce an exact copy of that individual. While gene cloning focuses on specific gene segments, whole organism cloning looks at the entire genome. Now sometimes, and you'll see an application when we talk very briefly about PCR, where we are trying to copy as much of the DNA as we can. But I guess the purpose or the, the difference between gene cloning and whole organ organism cloning in terms of the purpose is that with whole organism cloning, we actually are trying to allow the new cell to continue on its development and actually produce a new organism. In the last video, we talked about Dolly the sheep, but we've got Snuppy the dog, Nuri the pashmina goat. There's been cloning in the area of macaque monkeys and a number of different types of animals. More importantly, um, human cloning is one of those areas that pops up every now and again as a potential area of interest and of course, this has a huge amount of controversy associated with it because of the associated ethical issues around um, the cloning of humans. But in this particular video, we're going to contrast what we know and what we've learned about whole organism cloning with gene cloning. So the difference between whole organism cloning and gene cloning is again that relationship between a gene and a polypeptide, or we could call that a protein, which is what many of these polypeptides will become once they have folded into their uh, secondary tertiary uh, and sometimes quaternary structures. Gene cloning has been a much more efficient way um, to produce, uh, for example, hormones, and one in particular will look at insulin, as well as enzymes found in living organisms um, in vitro, that is in glass, literally, uh, because they have been used to treat diseases and uh, promote certain mechanisms in industrial processes as well. So this has had a very broad application. And as I hope would be obvious to you, if we can clone individual genes without needing to clone the entire cell, that would be a much more efficient way of being able to target exactly what it is uh, that we want to produce. One really important example, as I mentioned before, is human insulin. We used to try and collect that from pigs. Uh, now we know that um, this very, very important hormone, one that regulates blood sugar levels in the body and is uh, critically important to patients that have been diagnosed with diabetes, can now be produced um, industrially. So we're talking about uh, high yield, Actually, we're not just talking about high, we're talking about high and fast yields. And you can imagine the amount of, um, uh, of insulin that we would want to actually produce in order to use it as um, a, a treatment for those who are suffering from diabetes. So we needed a way that was fast, that was efficient, that was going to produce high yields, high quantities of these particular proteins that we were after, or these particular chemicals that we were after, and that's what gene cloning has allowed us to do. So what is the process? This is a diagram that comes out of your a Biology in Focus book, a great nice overview for what's going on in the process of gene cloning. So what we want to do is we want to try and uh, identify our host cell. So the first thing we want to do is we want to identify the host. What's actually going on here? What gene are we interested in? And of course, we've talked about techniques like CRISPR that have really had a lot to say about this. If we can find the specific gene that we're after, then what we can do is we can use a restriction enzyme 
um, which is going to cut the DNA. And the thing that it does when it cuts the DNA, often it produces something that we call sticky ends. So it's got little, little sections of DNA that make it easier for it to then uh, bond to the same sequence uh, of uh, bases in another piece of DNA. We tend to use a bacterial plasmid. So a plasmid is a piece of uh, circular DNA, and we find them very commonly in bacteria. Uh, and there's a, an obvious reason why we would want to use bacteria and through this process. But what we've got to do, of course, is we've got to use the same restriction enzyme um, to cut both the um, host DNA uh, sorry, to cut the donor DNA as well as the plasmid DNA in the same place and then get them to stick back together. Obviously, what we want to then do is inject the plasmid back into uh, the original bacteria, allow it to uh, reproduce. And one of the nice things about bacteria is the rapid reproductive rate. And because it has such a rapid reproductive rate, we're going to make lots and lots and lots of copies of that particular gene. So we're going to clone the gene. Now, of course, if we also are able, such as in the case of insulin, to um, be able to switch on this gene expression, that is for the gene to actually uh, express that um, ability to produce insulin, then we can actually uh, refine that, distill that, um, isolate the uh, particular chemical that we're after, and then we can have that uh, being produced in large amounts. So this is a, a little, uh, I guess, flow diagram of the steps that are associated with this process of gene cloning. Any process where we're introducing the gene from one organism to a different species um, often goes by this name of transgenics. So cross genes, if you like, genes that have crossed from one species to another, and they're not doing that naturally, we're cutting them out of one and we're sticking them into another, so transgenics and um, genetically modified organisms have also been produced in this same way. So what are some nice examples of gene cloning? Well, the um, Bacillus thuringiensis is one example of where we found a particular chemical that's produced by a bacterium, so by a particular gene in a bacteria that um, is toxic to insects. So we've been able to introduce that particular gene into a number of different plant crops in order to confer some level of uh, insect resistance uh, upon those particular crops. And, and Bt crops, that's where the Bt comes from, the, basically the name of the bacterium from which um, these are sourced. So what we've done is we've looked at um, uh, potatoes, tomatoes, wheat, soy, a number of different important crops that, that we use um, that have been genetically modified through this process of gene cloning. I've talked about human insulin. It's the um, E. coli, the Escherichia coli bacteria that is most commonly used for uh, human insulin. And one other where we're trying to copy a bit more than just a single gene is PCR, polymerase chain reaction. Now this is a, this is a gene copying process uh, which basically has been designed to help with um, where we have very small or trace amounts of DNA. So for example, um, one area is uh, forensics where this is uh, really important because you may have very small traces of DNA which may uh, be able to lead you to a particular suspect. But if you don't have enough of that, you can't run the tests that are required. And so PCR is a, is a particular technique that allows you to uh, amplify the number of pieces of DNA that you have, uh, the number of those um, copies of those genes in order to then run tests and, and try and look for matches. So there's a number of areas where genes cloning has been used in therapeutic medicines, uh, in agriculture, and, um, and also, I guess, more generally in human medicine, uh, as well as areas like forensic science. We'll have a look at a couple of these in a little bit more detail in class, but just a, just a quick overview, I guess, to give you an idea of some of these really important applications of gene cloning. Thanks for watching.